menace. He's not left us empty-handed. I don't think anyone's came up to this altar this week with a sincere heart and not gotten anything in return from the Lord. Amen. It just doesn't happen. You don't live for God and get nothing back. The Lord will meet you. If you come towards God, God will come towards you. He will meet you. And uh, we just enjoy so much this week being with this great church family. And great pastor, pastor's wife. We love each and every one of you. And like we say, y'all are our family. And brother and sister Driscoll are our Texas mom and dad. We wouldn't want nobody else to be our Texas mom and dad. We love them so much. Amen. And we're just so excited in the Holy Ghost about what's going on at the sanctuary of Abilene and in the area of Abilene and what God is doing. And man, there's a great revival to be had in this area and I believe we're witnessing it tonight. I believe that God is getting the saints ready to reach this area and to have the end time revival that God wants to see. Amen. If you would turn with me to Genesis chapter 21 and we're going to be starting at verse 1. Amen. Genesis chapter 21, starting right at the top of verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah, Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Amen. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God has spoken to him. Yes, sir. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. All right. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. Uh -huh. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the, the, and the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Yeah. And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. And all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. Right. For in Isaac, everybody say Isaac. Isaac. For in Isaac shall they see be called. Amen. I'm going to preach to you this morning from this thought. If you're going to father Isaac, you've got to disown Ishmael. If you're going to father Isaac, you've got to disown Ishmael. I mean, why don't you lay your Bibles to the side of you this night and raise up your hands and call the name of the Lord for one moment. Dear Heavenly Father, who can tell you what they'll see in the name of Jesus? Lord, we fill you in this place right now. God, help us respond to the word tonight. Help us have an open mind, open heart, open ears right now, God, to receive what you have for us right now. In the name of Jesus, won't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. Amen. We may be seated. Amen. Going to try and not be too long tonight. Just going to follow the Lord and see where He takes us. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. Jesus. Not only 
did God tell Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, 2 through 3, and then over in 4? Not only did He tell him that He'd be the father of a newborn son, yeah. but also of a great nation. Yes. All right. This was a major promise. Amen. Not only will I become the father of a new baby boy, but my seed will produce a great nation. Yes. Right. At this time, this was a mouthful. Right. If you was to say it to somebody, um, if you were to tell somebody, let alone somebody at the age of Abraham, that your son is going to bring about a great kingdom yeah. and a great nation, and your seed is going to do more than just make one son, yeah. but it's going to make, here say, the people of God. Right. So unbelievable to Abraham and Sarah that in fact, many times on multiple occasions, we read throughout Scripture that it just made them die in laughter. Oh, yeah. It made them bust out laughing. They thought it was hilarious. Yeah. They thought God had a sense of humor yeah. to come up to somebody as old as they are and tell them they're going to have a child. Yeah. It was very funny. Yeah. After the promise came, so did impatience. Yeah, sir. Abraham being as old as he was, was expecting it to happen right then. Right. He thought, I am an old man. I don't have much longer, let alone if it's even going to happen. If it is right. going to happen, yeah. then it's going to happen right now yeah. or on my time. Right. He expected to be in his timing. Yes, right. His logic is I'm old and it's got to happen now. Right. Can I tell you tonight that there's times where our logic and our timing is going to have to get out of the way for God to do what God wants to do. Can I tell you that there's going to have to come a time in your life where you get your timing out of your mind and you say, God, whatever your timing is, I'm going to trust it and I'm going to believe it. Somebody ought to worship the Lord in here. Somebody ought to stand up tonight and say, not only do I believe in the promise of God, but I believe in the timing of God. Some of us, oh man, when somebody gives us a word, yeah. Yeah. oh, whenever a prophet comes by and he gives us a promise, a word of prophecy, yeah. if it's good, we ain't got no problem taking it. There you go. If it's something good, oh, we 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 ready for it. We, we, uh -huh. we can't wait to get it. And right when God gets it, right when he gives it to us, we pull out our book, yeah. we get our pen ready, okay, win. Yeah. Okay, so you said you're going to help me in my finances, so well, uh, I, I need it like tomorrow. So <laughs> yeah. we're going to put down the time, yeah. we're going to put down the date, and this is when it's going to happen. Yeah. Because I, I'm going by what I, what I, I need. Right. I'm going by my timing. So quick we are to accept the promise of God. Yes, sir. But all oh, the trouble we got right. when it comes to accepting His timing. Uh, all the trouble we have whenever it comes to accepting when God is going All right. All right. to do it. Right. Can we understand tonight, I wonder, that the timing of God is just as important yes, as the promise is. of God. Yes. If you're going to accept the promise tonight, then you've got to get on the full game plan. Yeah. Then you've got to accept God's timing. Yeah. Come on and worship the Lord. It may be the will of God, but let me ask you, is it His do you want to be in the will of God? Then you better be in the timing of God. Come on and worship the Lord. There's people that are doing things in life that may be the will of God, but they want to push it and they want to push it. And they do it on the complete opposite timing that God had in store. I, I think back to, I remember the timing of 
Yeah. One night I, I had just gotten back in church. Well, I'd probably been to church for about four or five months. And uh, at this time, this is, was at the pinnacle of my weight loss when I was losing weight like crazy. You know, whenever you're super over late weight, whenever you're first starting, man, if you're on a strict, it'll just fall off. All right. And uh, we were, that night I was going to a youth rally and afterwards, they were having something called altitude. And if you don't know what it is, it's basically one of those trampoline parks where everywhere you look, there's trampolines. Yeah. Well, me and my confident self, I thought, hey, <laughs> hey, you know what? I I've been doing good. I've been losing a lot of weight. And uh, why don't we go do this? You know, we... we you know, uh, we got to be confident in ourselves. Let's go. Let's go to the trampoline park with all my friends. So, about ten minutes later, being at the trampoline park, I was probably about to pass out, uh, breathing heavy. And then I look off in the distance and I see the foam pit. Has anybody ever seen the foam pit before? You, they got the square foam in it. And uh, my mistake was going by what I saw because I looked out there. And I saw skinny people, and they were on the top of the phone. And man, they were just walking over it, and they'd jump on in, and then they'd crawl out, no problem. And in just a minute, they'd be out of the phone pit. Well, what Brother Jay didn't know was that the phone pit was about six feet deep. <laughs> and uh, they don't give a warning sign. They don't give you any warning. They don't let you know that not only is it six feet deep, but you better have some upper body strength if you want to get out of it. And so I see, hey, this looks awesome. So, man, I run and I jump with all my might on that trampoline and I dive off in. I land on my back and in about three seconds, it was like slow motion. I just went in. Just sunk down deep. And when I tell you, you can drown in foam, you can drown in foam. I almost did. And, uh, I stand up, and I stand up, and I'm still on the phone. So I crawl over to the edge, and I kind of put my hands up on top, and I kind of barely move the phone around. Now, keep in mind, I'm five foot two, and I'm six feet deep in this stuff, and uh, there's no leverage on it. So long story short, they had a unique night with the staff getting me out of there. We, we, we had some strength to pull me out. And I can guarantee you they probably put some steps inside the foam pit. And uh, it was a, it also that night I got a little bit closer to God. Because I realized just how fast and simply you can pass away. But the timing of God is so important. And that right there just shows that there may be times where we're eager to get something done. We may be eager to experience something. We may be eager to get something done in our life. But we've got to realize that timing is so important. I wonder how many times tonight a saint of God has failed or fallen away because they went after the will of God and they tried to do what God wanted to do in their life, but they tried to do it in the wrong time. They tried to push it and do it in the wrong time that God had them to be. You may be called tonight to be an evangelist. You may be called tonight to do something in the will of God. You may have a calling on your life, but you better do it when God wants you to do it. You better not try and push it. You better do it when God wants it to be done. Somebody ought to give the Lord a hand clap of praise in here. Amen. After some years had passed by, Abraham and Sarah had become not only impatient, but full of doubt. They decided to activate their backup plan and have Abraham go into Hagar and conceive. Yeah. Genesis 16, chapter 4, we read that he went into, he went unto Hagar and he conceived. She conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, listen to this. Her mistress was despised in her eyes. The moment Hagar got what she wanted, the moment Hagar conceived, she despised Sarah. Tonight, you may be thinking 
that this little shortcut you've got in your mind, this little thing you're going to do to kind of push forward what you want or what you want done in your life. You may think tonight that going outside the will of God and having a backup plan of getting what you need in your life is going to help you. But can I tell you what you may think is the greatest option you've got? What you may think is the greatest thing that's going to help your life is the very thing that despises what God wants from you. You may think tonight that you're doing okay when you get out of the will of God. And you're doing okay when you go by and you visit Hagar. And you entertain a backup plan. But what you don't realize tonight is that backup plan, that spirit of Hagar, is the very thing that despises what God wants for you. It's the very thing that despises, that despises the promise that God has given you. You know what somebody needs to do in here tonight? You need to wipe out every backup plan you got. You need to get rid of every thought in your mind that tells you there's something better. And you need to make up your mind tonight that you're going to live for God. You're going to stay in the promises of God. You're going to listen to God. That nothing's pulling you out. There's not going to be a Hagar. There's not going to be an Ishmael that's going to pull you away from God. Somebody ought to worship the Lord in here. Somebody ought to stand up and say, it's not going to get me. I'm not going to go to Hagar. I'm going to stay in the promises of God. Come on and worship the Lord in here. He took the sea and let the sea in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You may be seated. He took the sea and let the sea. He took the sea and the sea. My Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. You know what the Lord's calling on somebody to do tonight? You know what the Lord wants somebody to do? And when you come up to this altar later on, He wants you to look over and make sure you don't have any backup plans. He wants you to look over and make sure that you don't have another way out. That you don't have another thought in your mind. Well, if this don't work out by next week, I'm going to try and do it my way. Well, if it doesn't come through in two weeks, I'm going to try and do it my way. We've got to have saints of God tonight that is dedicated and that has their mind made up. We've got to have a strong church tonight that has their mind made up that nothing's going to pull us out. Nothing's going to pull us away. Nothing's going to manipulate our mindset into thinking there's something better. Can I tell you tonight, nobody can do it like God. Nobody can do it like God can. Can I tell you the way it's going to be worth it. When God does it, it's going to be done like nobody else can do it. Amen. This leads us to what God has laid on my heart. After 25 plus years after the promise was given, Isaac was born. When Isaac was born, and the promise of God was alive, and everyone was happy. It was such a great day. It was such a great moment. In this moment, Abraham and Sarah realized that God does what he's going to say. And not only does he do it, but when Sarah was holding Isaac, she realized that there was no other baby. There was no other child that could ever replicate this child found in Isaac, this promise found in Isaac. And on this great day when everybody was gathered up and the promise of God was in existence in front of everybody to see, and Abraham was throwing a great feast, getting all the family and friends to come over, and everybody was having a great time. Off in the distance, there was a bitter Hagar. And there was a mocking Ishmael right. looking at the promise of God. Right. There was the bitterness left over from what Abraham and Sarah, yeah. had, from what Abraham and Hagar had created. Yeah. There was some bitterness and some mockingness left over from the backup plan that they wanted. Right. It was in this moment that Abraham realized yeah. 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 when Sarah and God backed up what Sarah said, Abraham realized in this moment, I cannot keep what I created right. and right. hold on to what God has given me. Right. Right. Ishmael tonight is a representation of our flesh and of right. our will. Right. Tonight we cannot sit by and hold Ishmael and wonder why God has not given us 
are Isaac. We cannot be feeding the spirit of Hagar and feeding the spirit of Ishmael and wonder why we do not have an Isaac in our life. As much as Abraham loved Ishmael, he wasn't there going to let him get in the way of what God's promise was. As much as he loved Ishmael, he was not going to let somebody that was out of the will of God interrupt what God was doing in his life. We need somebody tonight that will stand up to the spirit of Hagar, that will stand up to the spirit of Ishmael and say, I don't care how much past I have with you. I don't care what I've done with you. Tonight I'm making a stand and I'm not going to let you get in the way of the will of God. I'm not going to let you stop the promise of God. I don't care how much time you spent with me. I don't care what kind of relationship you have with me tonight. You've got to tell Hagar, you've got to go. You've got to tell Ishmael, you've got to go. You've got to take a stand tonight and say the promise of God is going to come first in my life. Come on, pray. 